God. Amen. Let's be seated as I try to wind up this very fast. Mama, thank you for teaching us consistency. That's very powerful. Let's appreciate Mama one more time for the word on consistency. Don't be one thing today, tomorrow you're another thing. Stick with what God has given you until it works. You need to understand nothing just works. Things are made to work. If your ministry is not working, it's because you are not working. If your ministry is broke, it's because you are broke. <laughs> your ministry looks like you. So don't attack it to change. You just change. And your ministry will change. Amen. Thank you so much, Mama. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. Glory to God. How many of you came in today? This was your first day in here today. You came in today. Stand up. Who is that at the back there? Show your teeth so that I can see you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. We celebrate you. This is your wife? Oh, we celebrate you. Let's appreciate her. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Mama loved your preaching. Uh, Apostle Vincent, right? But I, I love using Kialo most of the time. It's a genuine, people who are genuine are genuine. This is a genuine person. There's nothing quoted about him. It's just, sometimes they say when you talk well about people, you spoil them, but it's not the truth. They are people who are just genuine. You are genuine. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate them. Let's appreciate them. And Pastor Muzungu, my son, came in today as well. Let's appreciate him. Let's celebrate him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We celebrate you. Uh, you know, I can't see you very well. Who is that at the back? Where is Pastor Griffin? Come, come over here. Yes, he traveled. He told me his, his, his wife was going to be here. These are very wonderful daughter of ours here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Very, very humble people. Mama, you can sit over here. There's even a seat here next to your mother here. Carry your staff. You see, I had to add works to my faith so that I can see very well at the back. <laughs> yes. Somebody say, hey! <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I'm so glad also to see Emma. Emma has been our daughter here for many years. Nachotaka niwewe, niwewe. Hallelujah. So I saw her come to the office and say, it will rain today. <laughs> this one that you have come all the way today, it will rain today. She has been like our child here from the beginning. And we are glad what God is doing in her life. Let's appreciate her as well. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Thank you so much. We agreed yesterday that when people turn back, you will feel it. The challenge is not people turning back. The challenge is what you allow it to do in your life. The challenge is not anyone that has hurt you. The challenge is what you allow the pain to achieve in your life. The challenge is not the man that is breaking your heart. The challenge is what you allow to happen. The challenge is not anyone attacking your ministry. The challenge is what you decide to use the attack to build. I told you you have no enemy. Every attack, everything that is not right is an opportunity for you to embarrass Satan. Men become better by these breakups. I try to adjust it a little bit. Men become better by these breakups. And I say, and I say it and I repeat, 
you will feel the attachment that you have towards people. But you don't have to die when people leave you. You don't have to hurt yourself and you don't have to hurt them. And you don't have to turn it into a battle. I said something the other day. Don't use what was meant to skyrocket your ministry. To chain your ministry. I wish you would understand the benefits of pain. Jesus took advantage of pain. Luke 22 verse 44. Put it there. Luke 22 verse number 44. Take advantage of pain. You will feel. Naturally, we are called to pastor people. When people walk away, there's that feeling you'll have. Paul felt it and followed Demas. He even knew where Demas went. to. That's when I knew I'm stronger than Paul. Because if Paul was on social media, it means he was following Demas. The church that Demas has joined. He said Demas has left and you could tell where Demas has gone. I think I'm a little bit stronger than Paul because I don't follow people to find out where they are. It's not good enough for you. Don't hurt yourself. Again, mama said, if you know your capacity of strength, then you can follow. All of us have our ways of guarding our hearts. So if you know you can look at it, follow it, and it will not affect you, well and good. But if you can not handle it, then guard your heart. God expects you to put a guard on your heart. One picture can take away your sleep for three weeks. Have moments that you don't go to social media. There are certain types of people who don't receive calls from them when you're about to sleep. Sir, you have your life. If you die premature today, no one will come to take care of your children. So you have a responsibility with this life. God did not call you to punish you. He already punished his son. There are so many things that ministers are punishing themselves and they call it persecution. Ladies and gentlemen, I gave you the importance of follow up and I said you've got to be humble enough to follow people. But it is important to know where follow up ends. I'm a loyalist by nature. When I'm connected to you, I'm connected to you. But mama knows one thing. When I leave you, you will know I left. Not that I'm throwing side shows, I'm posting things, I'm attacking you. No, when I leave, I, I have a gift. God gave me the gift of focus. I rarely lose it no matter what is going on, no matter what is happening. You can do things to get my attention and commit suicide because I didn't get there. <laughs> you didn't get the attention you're looking for. I didn't answer what you expected me to answer. I didn't behave like you. Many of us don't even know how to contain your pain. There are messages you don't preach in the middle of certain things. Emotional intelligence. Never let people you are pastoring begin to pity you. Don't preach persecution when you are being persecuted. <laughs> this is what we call emotional intelligence. No things you cannot change and stay away from them. This, race, this walk is a long journey. No matter, no matter what children do in the days of ignorance, they will regret it in the days of wisdom. Impact cannot be erased. When you have impacted a man very well, if there's no day that passes without that man thinking about you, so don't attack them. Be the bigger person. Your maturity will help you. Okay. And Jesus being in agony, he prayed. Pain is a weapon of prayer. Pain is an ingredient of prayer. There's a way you pray when you're in pain that you don't pray like that other days. Pain is an asset. Don't waste it. 
There's a book every minister is asking for. Conquering church breakups by love. I've still refused to release it. And I can assure you, when I release that book, almost every minister will read it. Your pain is your song. Don't waste your pain. Don't turn your pain into a begging bowl. Don't turn your pain into something people should use to pity you. Your pain is your strength. Use it to build a prayer life. And being in pain, give me the good news translation, and being in pain, being in agony, Jesus prayed. He prayed. Persecution is the mother of prayer. It's the mother of evangelism. It's the mother of church growth. It's the mother of major breakthroughs. God blesses me more in the days of my pain. When I remember what pain has paid me, I feel like thanking people that have pained me. They thought they were stopping you. They didn't know they were moving you to the next level. You need someone who is expecting you to fail if you will not fail. There are people when you remember that so and so will celebrate this. I, you wake up at 1 a.m. He has become a catalyst of prayer. A catalyst of excellence. Hallelujah. In great anguish, not anguishes, anguish is sorrowful attitude. In great anguish, he prayed even more fervently. So more prayer needs anguish. More prayer needs pain. More prayer needs discomfort. More prayer needs all these things. And his sweat, his sweat was like drops of blood are falling to the up. So ladies and gentlemen, we will feel the attachment we have towards people. But listen to me. Use it for church growth. Sometimes in this church we receive a hundred visitors a Sunday. One Sunday. That is not much. The least we can have sometimes 30 visitors Sunday. 40. Something pulls them. When you raise people and they betray you, your passion to raise others becomes the indication that you are a genuine man of God. Don't let anyone that you raised that betrayed you pity you out there. Let them look back and say, hey, hey, hey. Train people that when they speak, they are following. <laughs> say, my God. You don't date someone at the same level with the one that rejected you. You must raise the level a little bit. It's only bad if you've been dated by the best. Because if he leaves you, you have no alternative. Become so good that people will feel when they walk away. Because they can't find another you. That's what I'm talking about. No matter what you do on earth, there can only be one Morris Olo. Just ensure that you are relevant. Be the you that no one can be in a special way. And as I told you, grace can be put on people. When one person leaves, don't make him your preaching. Don't make him a big deal. Replace him. If you made him, you can make somebody else. So don't, don't let bitterness and pain cripple you to the place where every day you are still insulting someone that left church. And after service, in fact, many of you pastors don't know that in every service you do, there are three other services going on. When going through rejection and pain and betrayal, be careful how you open up to those you think are loyal. Because several times, those who have left you are more loyal than those who are with you. The danger is not from outside. The danger is from inside. That's why Jesus did not, did not console himself by who was left. Jesus didn't turn back and say, hey, Peter, 
And now that those guys, those wicked people are gone, Peter, what do you think we should do? He, because, put it there, and he entrusted himself to no man because he knew what was in man. So Jesus did not surrender his life to anybody in his team. Copy him. I'm not teaching you mistrust. I'm just teaching you the truth. Look at this. And Jesus did not entrust himself to any man because he knew what was in man. He knew what was in man. Look at this. John 2, 24. But Jesus did not commit himself the way pastors commit themselves to human beings. I think my brother, this is, you heard what Pastor Chris was saying. He said, these are my pillars. We your royang. You see, I outgrow your ujinga. So that, that, you don't find me in many pastoral groups because I agree with that. I agree with, that. with all humility. Because sometimes it's very tiring what pastors discuss. And it is a blessing that you have not seen anyone from this area here. It, it is a great blessing for me. It's a great blessing for me in disguise. What kills many of you are your expectations. Who you expected to comment on your birthday? Was it going to change your life? That the person I did not see during my birthday, was it going to add you years? That how can I launch this ministry and nobody comes? Why are you launching it for them? I wasn't sent to this region to pastor pastors. No. So if you don't see any of them, you clap your hands and you thank God. Because I'm not sent to save them. I can't save them. They are not my sons. <laughs> they are doing their work. The challenge is some of you are trying to run away from the mother of grace, loneliness. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. When you get there, you'll be very powerful. He knew all men. Once somebody is a man, he knew all men. Look at verse 25. And had no need that anyone should testify of man. There's a brother I used to have in the faith that every time he met, bro, if you see the kind of fish that has walked into my camp, you see this watch I'm wearing? One of them. Bro, sometimes I just look at them and I say, this God is amazing. I say, eh, I hope you know, come back and cry to me tomorrow again that the same thing. He say, bro, the, this woman is loyal and his members, his major partners are always women. This woman, bro, and you see, and she's beautiful. I say, so you even noticed this beautiful and he has bought your watch. He say, bro, hey, when you see this one, bro, and he used to drive their cars. Say, like, you see what I drove in? I was looking at him. One day I put my hand on his head. He was talking. And I put my hand on his head. He has brought his say I wanted to find out if your temperature is normal. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, hey, because I don't think your temperature is okay. Somebody say, hey! <laughs> when they did him, <laughs> when they did him, <laughs> He said, bro, pray. I said, have you returned the watch? He said, bro. <laughs> and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Dano, no time one Ruth. He knew what was in man. Good news translation, verse 25 and 25. I want to close very fast. <laughs> but Jesus did not trust himself to them because he knew them all. Verse 25. There was no need for anyone to tell him about them because he himself knew what was in their hearts. Let me say translation. Your challenge is that you think you're serving a God who knows everything, but something keeps telling you they are human beings that are different. No, they are not. But Jesus did not entrust his life to them. He knew them inside out. Knew how untrustworthy they were. He didn't need any help in seeing right through them. 
Judas didn't begin as a bad man. No. For him to hold the finance office, he began well. The question should be, what destroyed that man along the way? Because man, every man can be good. Every man can be spoiled. And many of you pastors spoil people, then you blame the devil. Look at this. So you have to understand the reason there is where follow-up has to end. Something happens when you follow a man. Whenever you do follow-up, you are sending a message unknown to you. Whenever you do follow-up, there is what you are saying that you are not really saying. Anytime you call a man immediately after Sunday service, you have not even finished well, at an asker in the background, your wife is sharing grace, and I, he, the person can tell the bad Jaisha is with Namisha Pigasim. That my daughter, I was in prayer, my heart was disturbed. The person already knows you are not praying. You are telling the person a message. You are sending a message unknown to you. When you do follow up Saturday late in the night, there is a message you are sending unknown to you. You need to know men. When you preach against other ministers, you are preaching something other than what you are preaching and your members can pick it in case you don't know. And they, they have their conclusions. They know why you are preaching it. The moment you tell a member of your church, don't give money to just any preacher. You have already preached your message. And they have picked it. One guy picked an idea, a very powerful idea, and I went to see him, and he told me, eh, I have no shared with my pastor, and please don't tell him. I know he's your friend, but don't tell him. I have my reservations why I don't share things with him. I marked that man from that day. Eventually, he had always wanted to leave his pastor and join me. And, you know, things were... I, I kept the man away even when everything was breaking down in that ministry. I told him, you can't leave until the opportune time. But now, because he could talk like that about a man who raised him, I handled him with caution, knowing I could be the next man online. Never let one million make you pray like you are useless. Eleven one million mukuru mushika dwana lemuni. You are there, they are talking to you and you una shtuka tu. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> they say this thing we have given this man. <laughs> Somebody say, hey! <laughs> I've made my mistakes. Learn from them. I can share with you the dangers of trying to hinder someone from leaving church. I used to have someone that their giving would be more than the whole tent. And I was still not mature enough to read when someone is tired of you. And he said, the doctor said, my back, I, said, I can't sit, I, said, I can't sit for long, I said, you noise. I said, I can reduce the sound. He said, my back, I can't drive for long. I said, I will give out one of my cars and a driver. If I knew what I knew today, I would not make such statements. He said, eh, you know, our former spiritual father, they are just trying to tell you the truth. And you are dumb. You are, you are too dull to notice. Many pastors are too blind to see obvious things. Sir, I've been through some things that have made me wise. I've learned that so much money comes to people that don't look for money. I've learned that when you despise money, you'll handle money. But I've learned if you are a pastor who's, who's, whose mouth is sweet for money, it comes out better in my vernacular. There's a way an anointing comes on you and you see money. You have a very long way to go. These are mistakes I've made in ministry. So I can't make them again. 
Let me teach you what I've learned. I've learned that truly rich and great people don't love publicity. And they don't like to be followed. And they don't like consistent calls. And they don't like to be treated special. Not treating them special will make them stay with you. Guarding them will make them run away from you. I've, I've pastored everything I can advise you. Sir, your integrity in your hunger is a testimony you can't get with a million dollars. We lived in Dandora one time, and, and I've been like this for a long time. We lived in Dandora one time, and you see the anointing was on my life, and you were suffering. And a certain group of women went and shopped and came with the shopping. We had even nothing for that day, and they were downstairs. Because even when I lived in Dandora, it wasn't ordinary Dandora. I've always been like that. It was Dandora right, brother, but it wasn't ordinary Dandora. And I was in Dandora. My faith has never been weak anytime. Even when I'm down. So they came. It is a Dandora that you have to prove where you are going to climb up. And the caretaker said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. they brought a shopping and I told him, go and tell those women I don't want to see them. They should go back with the shopping. No Dandora pastor talks like that. That thing skyrocketed my honor before them. The next time I went to preach in their ministry, they had to go to their pastor. If somebody wants to do something for Apostle, how does he go about it? Your integrity is more important than meeting a need. To be hungry is better than it at the hands of a man that will use it to show your nakedness to the public. I've slept hungry in integrity. Sir! If you choose to punish me with your tithe, you have a long way to go. I don't follow up tithe, even when I need it. I taught you about trusting God in humility. When you behave like you need nothing from a man that seems to have everything, they will respect you. One time I gave my car as an offering, we were building the tent, and Sam came to me, hey, Daddy, that you can use our car until when another car comes. And I told them I didn't give you my car. I gave my car to God. Please carry your car away. I don't use members' car, then I return. I don't do that. I have my integrity. The car is an altar. It's not just the car, it's an altar. You can't help me with the car. I don't have it, but I have my integrity to keep. A man gave me a Mercedes Benz car. And then did something stupid and I rebuked him. And he said, you should know who you are talking to. I drove the car to his door and parked it there and left. He said, hey, hey, I've never seen this. You'll see it with Maurice Solo. Kiasa kushe kukiona BMW. Sasa wa shirika wanakusukuma kama Wilbaro. Hey, hatipasi tuliona, tuliona utu wa company maombi. Hili tukiomba, they now start teaching you how to pray. Pasi tukona a special prayer. They start giving you, a pray for our auntie like this. Pray for our uncle like this. Pray for our grandfather like this. Na wewe unachapa, hey, ndia naitwa nani unanza, baba. Unasema tulikuambia, he's a prayer warrior. Poverty is a bastard. Poverty is bad. You'll never be poor after today. You will do ministry in integrity of the heart. You may track with your integrity. There's a God that calls you. He's watching your integrity. He's watching how you... Oh, my Liga da. Dige basa. Liga bada. Idihira. Lakri basa lagadia. May no man insult you. As you pastor them. A man called me to his house. And then gave me a thousand dollars. Then began to explain to us why they were leaving church. He said, actually, pastor, we love you, but if you bring meetings to Nairobi Cinema, at least that one we can come. But Shauri Moyo, our kids have been trying to adjust. They've been asking us, Daddy, what is happening? Because they were living in Karen. Daddy, what is happening? We, we, we don't really get now. How did you guys get yourselves here? The kids have been asking them. That was the only big car we had in the parking. So when they told me that they are leaving, my heart shook. Because at least every Sunday members would say, look at the big car in our parking. The parking of our church. <laughs> so they said, Pastor, we love you, but the environment and you know our kids now. You know our kids. They go to international schools, you know. The principal is a white guy and all that. And 
They just seem not to understand what those other kids are doing. They looked at other children like Zinjanthropas. <laughs> homo habilis. <laughs> homo erectus, homo sapiens. Australopithecus. <laughs> because those are kids that are cultured. There's a way they are. It made me make the children's church in that building is looking like is looking like uh, is looking like uh, is looking like uh, um, is looking like an international school classroom. Because a child will not go to Brook House during the week, and on Sunday you take him to a Luabondo class. <laughs> if you have a Sunday school teacher who behaves like she wants to tell offerings looks like she has not eaten for a long time she comes out and those, those guys they look at the Sunday school teacher that the Sunday school teacher is trying to teach drama ngombe and those guys their kids still watch daddy what are they doing that they are acting out a cow such drama is still going on in your ministry. Mbo. Mbo. Yesu wa mezaliwa. Mbo. <laughs> oh, I didn't teach about excellence this time, right? Mbo. Na mutu wa brook house ananga. I said, honey, what is, what is going on? What is happening over here, man? The kids have said, daddy, what is going on over here? No, they are trying to Mbo. <laughs> <laughs> one day I, I was showing my son a post and, and people were excited somebody took a picture with a, a certain guy and people were excited and my son was but we saw him in the mall the other day so why are these guys excited I said my goodness someone is excited is, is, is one thing why are they excited oh you mean oh that they have seen him wow okay that's nice that's good but I don't see the sense in it There are things you post that can only attract people of a low thinking capacity like you. You have to outgrow some things. I can't post a politician on social media that I met them. No. I, I arrived in Mombasa. One of the political leaders was within business class and there was a little bit delay and he was, he was his concern. He said, Pastor, is everything okay? I can ask my guys. Now, how do I post that on social media that we were with so and so? What is that? I got him to come back and one great man, we were with him there. He knows me. We are headed the same direction. And he said, hi, hi, you here? You? I said, yeah, how are you? I'm good. Okay, uh, let's go. So I said, Papa, you are level. Which level is that? You ujinga na utoto na kukosa kujijua. Some of you, my spiritual sons, I'll carry you to some places. Please don't embarrass me there. At the sasa umeona gari, umeona Bentley, unapiga picha. Papa, this one I have to take. <laughs> Don't embarrass me there. <laughs> Somebody say, hey! hey! These things are normal to me. I've learned how to contain them and make them nothing. Because it's a normal life. The governor wants to see you. You come out and say, oh, His Excellency, how are you? Oh, how are you doing? Are you okay? Are you great? How is your family? Oh, you guys are good. Okay. Oh, that's right. How do you want to see me, sir? How can I be of help to you? He said, well, um, wow, I, I wanted you to pray for me. And he said, okay, no problem. Lean down and pray. God is taking the church where the governor of your county will come to church. And when he's done, you tell him, His Excellency, listen, His Excellency, we had something for you. It's a political campaign. Maybe you can use it to fuel your car. Please take 100,000 from the church. Us, that guy will think twice about that church. He'll be interested to come back again. Our begging has gone to another level. If you see the things pastors are posting because of politics, because Alipewa El Fumiamoja Mahali, now he's campaigning using scriptures. There are things you do and heaven is disappointed about you. May you not get there. May you not get there. No, don't do that. 
great people, way people, as they greet you, hi, how are you? They have watched you from your hair to your belt to your shoes. How are you? Okay, you're welcome. We can, hey, 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 pastor. Hey, 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 Somebody say, hey, 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 changa baba, baba chango. That's how you lost some people. I learned my lessons from there. Before I knew it, the man left church. And my, my stupidity dawned on me. Something happens when you do, whenever you call someone is a message. Whenever you follow someone is a message you are sending. Is a message you are sending. Six things happen when you follow up. Number one, you are demonstrating the importance of the person you are following up. Never follow up a gift. The way some of you pastors follow up a promise. We are just following up what you promised to give. You are demonstrating the importance of the one you are following up. So do it very cautiously. Because what you make important today will make you less important tomorrow. You will never know when you are losing your respect. You are demonstrating the importance of the one you are following. Number two, you are putting your emotions online. Because if you follow him, remember what I said yesterday, and after all promises that they'll come to church, they don't come. And you do a second follow-up, because we're in a condo, how we live, and they didn't come again, and you do a third one. By the time you're doing the fourth one, you can't pray. You're putting, you're investing your emotions the wrong way. Number three, you are giving the individual an opportunity to either humiliate you or honor you. Nobody that is dishonoring you today just began it. You taught them how to dishonor you. You taught them how much you loved chicken and the way you are folding chicken and chapati kwa nyumba mshirika. Ichiemo maduondi ya mayu Mwonyo kuwa nika mshirika. Una meza ugali kwa nyumba ya mshirika. Kwa mshirika pia unakula mpako una, una, una guza ugali hivi na inakuwa soft. Una inge. Una tengeneza supoya kwa nyumba ya mshirika. Una stua supu inakujo na chota. Wanasikia melia kwa mgongo. Pum! Wanasema pasta ya nyoli kwa nanja. <laughs> Ungezea. <laughs> Meduru baba supu. Ungezea baba supu. <laughs> Somebody say, hey! You taught them how to dishonor you. Don't cry when they do it. He chose spoiler. Umekula kwa mshirika mbako kashibo katoa viatu ukaka. Ukasema wanangu hii ndio nchi ya hadi ya maziwa na mambo mazuri zote. Ukasema nimechoka wacha nilale kidogo. Waka dim light uka uka dose kidogo kwa nyamba kwa mshirika. Wanakusikia. Ai ja duong ya ai. Umearibu anointing baba. Unaharibu anointing. When you visit a member enda ukiwa umekula vizuri. Na umejisaidia kama ni mkojo, umekojo, kama ni kila kitu umefanya. Enda hapo and don't spend more than required time. Be straight and to the point, okay? Okay, okay. Even if there's no call, pick your call quickly. Hello? Yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, okay. Uh, so, so exactly how do I pray? You are gone. You don't stay. Shadaga Brazil, Abadaga. Limata. You don't stay in a member's house one hour, two hours, three hours. I had a son here that will visit a member and a pick you up. 
breakfast anapikiwa lunch anakunywa chai ya saa tisa anakula chakula ya juni halafu anapewa pesa walimleta kwa ofisi yangu hapa the man was saying pastor tell me what you are coming to my house to do breakfast lunch dinner i'm at work and you are, you are calling my wife every time tell me what is it i told him i warned you you see my spiritual father I said hey, endele, endele, hey, okay, nini? you are with mama there and I say this because your tabia. I say this a day will come you will wish I'm there to advise you respect yourself Jesus knew men you are building a wall you will not come down from the onset of this ministry, this is the way I do my things. There are people in this ministry that are here for 10 years that I don't know where they live. I've never been to their houses. Where's Pastor Victor? I don't know your house, right? I don't know his house. I've never been to his house. I don't know your house. Never been to your house. Now, if these are pastors who are close to me, I don't know where they live. If I come to your house, thank God. Thank God for it. If the word I preach is not strong enough to help you, that I must add it with coming to your house, then I can't help you. I don't know where they live. I don't know. Don't give people power against you. Then you start binding them. There are people that I lost, that I'm the reason I lost them because I brought them close. There are people you keep by keeping them far. You'll keep them. Whoever you can't keep at the back, you can't keep in front. Learn that from me. Whoever you see becoming manipulative to be recognized, and manipulative, manipulative son, there is always a seed that you have to pick from their house. There is always a gift that you must go to their shop. Behave like you didn't hear the next time they tell you there's a gift. You'll not die. No, you will not die. You'll not die for not picking that gift. You'll not die. You'll help them. You don't give people the, the opportunity to dishonor you, then you cry. I have given men the opportunity to dishonor me. And I cried when they dishonored me. And now I have learned that no one can disrespect you without your permission. You permit them. There are doors you need to close. For the effectiveness of your pastoral ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, you are demonstrating your attachment. And anyone who knows, there's a guy that was very manipulative here that would come all the way to the smith and then intentionally ask me, Papa, where are you? And then I tell him I'm in the office and he say, I'm at the smith but I'm very busy. I'll make time to see you. I gave the guy an appointment for three months. He could not see me. Because I was stupid. I've grown without emotions attached to it. I'll not hate you. Sayu na angalia mtu mnyame grow. I won't hate you. But I'll teach you that you are not as smart as you think. I told you that if anybody has anything against me, that you, the last thing you must never try, and pastors get this, never contain anyone that has something he keeps threatening he will use against you if you lose him. Use the thing before he uses the thing. Your demons... When, you know, do you know why your wife will sometimes just behave? She knows you are attached to her. She knows there's nothing you can do. <laughs> I'm giving a good example. It is dangerous when someone you are pastoring gets there. Where they can have a little board meeting and say, is it, it, uh, nothing will move. Where in God, Kwanza? If pastor is not willing to apologize, 
then you have you paid tithe? No, you have you paid tithe? No, you have you paid? No, we are not paying tithe. We are going to sabotage that project. He will look for us. That is what is in men. Jesus knew what is in men. Don't give someone an opportunity to learn your weakness to use it against you. That's why I'm trying to advise you. No matter how hungry you are for money, one day you'll have it. Don't be so hungry for things. Don't, don't destroy the congregation with unnecessary contributions. There's a pastor who has bought this. You want to buy it. Your ministry has not reached that level. You are killing everything to buy it. Some of the things you see me with, these guys don't know how it came. I'm a generational pastor. I don't only pastor here. All of you are pastors. These are not members. I'm your pastor. So don't want to be me in a day. You'll kill yourself. It has been a journey that has taken long. I've paid my dues. If you see me sleeping in a presidential suit, don't die to do that. I have raised people that can pay that without feeling it. You have not, don't let the pressure, I wish I would talk about conquering ministerial pressure. Don't let no other man of God put you under pressure by what they are doing. That's why be reserved the pages you follow. Don't watch too much success when you are a failure. You will steal. Don't, don't have this man of God that Monday you are, you are there to admire his crowd. Oh my God. All this is paying tithe to one man. Aye. <laughs> and he's talking things and there you are. You don't even have a car. Watching too much success without working on yourself is what is killing many preachers. Because you want to buy what a man paid for. I've seen people killing themselves. And I know this one, this one I know is weak financially. He has no structures. He has no systems. He has no investment. He has no long-term goal. He has not built muscles. There is a school. Don't take your children for a show off. If your muscles have not reached there. It doesn't mean you don't have faith. Sir, it is good to be alone. And to follow the blueprint that God gave you you will still arrive. How many times did I drive a B14 in a Gongwa Nyuma and my brothers were taking loans to buy new cars and they were mocking me. And I said one day I'll just get there. I'll get there. I'll drive these things without loans. I got there. I look back at some of them now. They are struggling. Why? Because you lived your tomorrow today. Ministerially you need wisdom to manage what God has also given you. That's why the 12 baskets were picked up. It was a miracle, but God does not want us to waste even a miracle. No man should give you 10 million as a gift and tomorrow you are begging. What is wrong with you? You mean you can't think? How do you buy five cars at a go? What is happening to you, man of God? Listen, I'm a man of faith. Faith does not condone stupidity. If I will help you, you will remove your eyes from so many ministries. Sometimes you may need to stay away from testimonies of explosion that you can't authenticate. A man of God preached for us and said, those testimonies that I gave while I was beginning to preach, please edit them out. That's why. He said they are boosters. They didn't really happen. And he said, I'll sit down with you. I want to teach you some things. I said, what is it? He said, I want to teach you. Because, sir, if you catch what I'm about to tell you, let, let me tell you, when you listen to the testimonies I give, you may think they are lies. Until I begin to give you proofs and this and this and this and this. And here's the man it happened to. If there is no testimony, we leave it. There must not be a testimony in every service. God did not call you to read testimonies. He called you to create them by grace. So if grace did not create, be satisfied and leave it there. Don't leave this place and go and gather other pastors that you are beginning a pastor's conference. When did you hear that? Now, it is one thing to pastor people is another level of war when you begin to pastor pastors. This thing you see me doing, God spoke about it over 10 years ago. 
and I didn't start. I knew it was there, but I didn't start. And to prove it, I think 15 years ago, I was called that a team of pastors were gathered in a Bible school somewhere. I spoke for 15 minutes. They said, we need to listen to this man. But do you know what? God will show you your future and bring you back to prepare you for that future. Sasa, back then, what would I be telling them? Theory. Teaching pastors is not theoretical. You teach with your life. This is what I've made a mistake in. And this is what it has cost me. You understand? That's why you need to learn from a man who has also burnt his fingers. And I can confirm it to you that there are people I'm the one who is responsible for their behavior because I didn't know where to put the brakes. I said this one, no. I thought I was being a good pastor until I burnt my fingers. Don't burn your fingers. Be careful what you share with members because everyone that is fighting you today is someone you fed yesterday. A king brought other people and showed those people his glory and his royalty and his house and his gold and everything. And that night they came for those things. No man goes after you except you have showed them what you should have not showed them. One, one principle, or maybe except for the television crew, those who work in the studio, they have a bit of access to my home. No matter what I have that I'm tempted to show, sir, if you come to my house, thank God, and I can tell you with all humility, I have what to show. <laughs> but it's just wisdom. A man of God took his elders to go and see his ranch. When they came back, he's an elderly man of God. Two weeks later, none of those people remained in church. It began a battle he fought until he died. One of those members worked out how he was going to be armed. And they armed him. They disarmed him. Don't joke with people. Jesus did not entrust his life to any man. Their things don't discuss with anybody. If you're going to be an effective pastor, there's a side of your life that no man should know. No matter how big some testimonies are, just swallow them. Just keep them to yourself. That Mze fought that thing until... It became such a battle that the very man who helped him get a gun, who was very senior with the licensing people and all that stuff, was now coming after him. And when your own son is fighting you, you never know how to fight. Because you, you, you told them too much. In, in VIP protection, they teach that privacy and being mysterious is the highest form of security. Because security is more mental than it is physical. It's not having so many bodyguards. It is being intelligent. You'll understand. You know, some of you may not understand what I'm saying now. When you get there, you'll understand. Some of you will play this message when you are now going through it. Sayu is here, Leo. Sayu is here, Leo. Because we are 25. You are a nice pastor. And there's nothing wrong you have done. One day you'll understand why Elijah was staying on the hill. Not because he likes. So that he can see people when they are coming. When they came, they said, man of God, come down because he was up to see them when they are coming. Some of you pastors, something is wrong with you. Monday morning, <laughs> let me translate. Monday asubui. <laughs> Look at this. So, you are demonstrating attachment and you are expressing your fear of loss. The most dangerous people are people who know you are afraid of losing them. 
Wachungaji mnaelewa hii vizuri eh? Umewahi kuwa na mtu mwenye unaogopa kupoteza? Naongea ukweli. Unaogopa kumtupoteza. Na akajua unaogopa kumpoteza. That is what gives them the boldness to say the things they say. Ah, me I cannot be touched. One one was telling us that in their church nobody can give 20,000. He said papa cannot touch me. Because if he asks for 20, nobody can give if not me. Ah, me he can't. He can't. And you keep such a person around you, no challenge, you'll need this message. You'll change your house to the hill. Take <laughs> building <laughs> shy once beaten twice shy follow up reveals your vulnerability i know a man of god a brother who called me at 1 pm alikuwa ameingiwa na ulcers akasema bro i told you about that my pastor i want to go and see him say has the man of god it is one He said, eh, sir, because we can't just afford to lose him at this time. Remember, we have already lost four pastors. So him, I want to go and tell him that at least he should give us five months. I live in increasing salary. I told him, bro, you still believe me? He said, bro, that's why I'm calling you. I said, go and fire him at this time. Go and tell him not to come back to church again. He didn't understand what I was telling him. Now he understands. There are people, give them fair to go. Come and defend your hawana. In case they are struggling with insecurity, give them bodyguards to guard them out of the church. I know a man of God in Africa that prays like a prayer machine. But there's one woman he walked to and he said, Mama, I've prayed, I've fasted. There's no prayer, I've no prayed for you to leave this church. So I've decided to answer the prayer. Nishike Mkono, come. The woman was like, no, Papa, no, Papa. He said, security, help me. He carried the woman. He said, Mama, this is gate. You see, this is the gate that goes out of this church. If I ever see you here, mama, we will kill you. Don't come. Go. He said, Papa, no, no, I'm not your papa. Please go. 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 There's a great father in my life that bought, bought dinner for one of the politicians who was a member of his. That man was finishing him. He bought dinner for that man and as soon as the dinner was served and the table was set, he knelt down. He said, hey, Papa, he said, I am just begging you. You have to leave the church. If you don't leave the church, I'm going to leave the church. So choose. He said, Papa, he said, no, 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 no. My son, you have to leave. If you don't leave, I'm not. He said, okay, okay, Papa, what is it? He said, you must leave this church. Follow up reveals your vulnerability. And all of us, in a way, we try to hide how vulnerable we are. So, unajifanya to rami, Papa, rami. Inakuuma moyo. Holy Ghost, kadad. But who? Kumbe moyo. Inauma. Inauma baba. Hi. Somebody say, Sir, I am too healed to be bitter. That's why God can trust your life with me. I'm too healed to be bitter. I've accepted the lessons I needed to learn. I've made resolutions I needed to make. And I've accepted things that must happen no matter how much you pray. Moyo. Moyo ajaribu kulala hulali, hupumziki, ukuli, ukai njaa ukimbii hutembei huruki hushuki chini holy ghost hai <laughs> somebody say eh hey! hey! so following some people has to end for the following reasons one that the individual may come back to their senses There are people who don't think until you stop following them. When you stop following them, something hits them. 
Aya. So Sunday can pass. Papa didn't call. Monday, another Sunday, Papa didn't call. Ah, one month, Papa didn't call. Ah. You must not always be the man that is left. You must learn how to live before you are left. That the individual may come. There are, there are sons and daughters you'll never help except you just stop following them up. It's like a woman that you live to do what she wants to do. Women are not good with that. I said, honey, I was feeling like buying a dog. It is right, my, my wife. That is the Holy Ghost. Go and buy the dog. Honey, I'm feeling like buying salt. Buy it, my wife. Honey, I feel like I want to travel. Travel! There's a way a woman feels good when you say no. When your husband who used to say no, no longer says no. You are a need. I didn't say anything. Something terribly went wrong. That you may move on. Building false expectations around people that are done with you wastes a lot of spiritual energy that was to move your work to the next level. When you make certain resolutions, there's a way you move on. Sir, that's why I'm happy the way I am. Because I made certain resolutions. In fact, I told you that not long ago, I cleaned my phone. That one of my sons, who is a, mil a multimillionaire, wrote me, and I asked, who is this, please? It rang home. Papa can ask, who is this? What happened? The guy sat up. And this is the thing. Even when you give a chance for an individual so that you can move on, be careful so that you are not brought back into the same misery. I will still be your father, but just know that something has died. Give people an opportunity to work again for the trust that they lost. Don't give it back to them automatically. Don't let them bribe you back and things will be the same. That guy you saw there has looked for me for years. And when we met, it was very brief. <laughs> because he still has work to do. Unknown to him. Don't let people lose privileges and then you throw them back because you are desperate. If a man once left you, what tells you he cannot leave you again? If someone tried to kill you, what makes you think he will not try to kill you a second time? So give people the privilege to build back what they destroyed while you love them and smile at them. That you may guard your sanity, number three. You need your sanity. You are a father. You have emotions. You need to sleep. You need to exercise. You need to eat right. Some of us need to begin running. The fasting resumes next week. I may rest only for a Monday because we have six months. We already took off. February, I fell ill a bit, so I couldn't finish it well. So now, March, for those who are fasting with me, we may only rest Monday. We start the journey. And this is not six to six. I have some two nice small dogs. And they are like human beings. They come and look at me. I told mama, these dogs are perceiving what is happening. They are saying, what is happening to papa? This is not the papa. You know, they, they look at me. One day they looked at me. They followed me. While I entered the house, I looked back and I could see the emotional attachment. I went back and I said, guys, what is happening? You know, there are dogs and there are dogs. I asked them, guys, what is happening? And I could tell these dogs were talking to me. No, this is not you. We feel it. You are not eating. That you may have sanity. Usitese mwili hivo na unatesa moyo. Unatesa moyo, unatesa emotion zako. When they kill you, they won't take care of your kids. When they kill you, they'll promise everything in the funeral. You need to talk to a widow that was promised heaven when her husband was being buried. She will tell you the number of calls she makes that nobody picks up. Pastor's wives, don't, don't catalyze the pain of your husband. Because if you lose that man, you don't know what widowhood is until you sit down with a widow. And she will tell you just hearing his voice was enough. He may not need to do nothing. So don't make your wife a widow. Don't live in the best part of town and pick someone from the wrong side of town and give him the privilege to enter your bed sheets. You are discussing ministry the whole night with your wife. Now you are ministry. Hata 
zile vitu wanasema kutuhusu you and your wife evangelist and a failed member inside the bedroom you have allowed members to your bedroom that is witchcraft god will teach you where ministry should end don't kill yourself i'm here to help you don't kill yourself paulo donated some people to satan he said have given paul looked at a ministry where he could sow them there was no pastor that was willing to accept them as a seed paul gave them to the devil he said satan come take these ones i sow I, i have freely donated these ones to the devil if Paul could not help some people, you will not help everyone. Pastor, get it in you to your skull. You will not help everyone. If Jesus was preaching and Judas was pricing how much he was going to sell Jesus. When you say you a counseling session, you cancel Judas, you cancel Judas, you cancel Judas, you cancel Judas, you cancel Judas. Don't kill yourself in stupidity. You have a wife to take care of. You have a young wife that needs your emotions. You have a young husband that needs your emotions. You must learn where how to suppress the pain of ministry and have your life that's why i was praying that god should bless all of you that you should know where it ends so that your kids don't feel the pain that you are going through she watched what her father was going through there's pain you can't avoid but there is a life you have to live beyond it don't let people give you their own version of christmas every christmas there are those who are good at Breaking you and Christmas is just nearing. There are some of you that fight battles every Christmas. What on another Christmas where on another Muliman? There are four years that I never celebrated Christmas. I celebrated all of them in the cave. I'm not telling you to go there. And I wasn't doing that because I was in pain. No, I was seeking God. But you need your life. You have you have this life. You have children. You have children. You have a wife. You have a mind to keep sound. How do you pain until comedy no longer means something to you? Until now you can't laugh. People are laughing, you can't laugh. You go out for dinner, you call something, you call a smoothie, you sit there, you start dozing. They say, sir, are you okay? He said, hey, give me the bill, I'm just going home. You have, left, you have allowed people to take your life away from you. You book a good hotel for a holiday, you can't sleep. Tumbo inakuuma tu. Tumbo inakuuma tu. Usimameko kwa dirisha. Huku Mombasa unaangalia beach. Hata hiyo beach hauoni. Na mwenye amekufanyia hivyo anakula kuku in their village. Planning how to deal with you again when they are done eating chicken. And you have become a master at carrying a necessary pain. God delivered me from that rubbish, my brother. Ha. <laughs> Be careful that this does not plant arrogance in you. Because you don't need to be arrogant. And you don't need to be an I don't care. I'm just teaching you to know how to balance. Tukikuzika leo, ministry taendelea. Never forget that. Never ever forget that. Right? That you may be free from living in denial. You must end some follow-ups because some of you, you are using your follow-up to protect yourself or to, or, or, or to you are using your follow-up to empower your self-denial. Many of you are living in self-denial. You have watched how someone is behaving and you know that the behavior of this guy is the behavior of someone that is no longer going to be with me. But you don't want to believe that they can live. So you are trying to live in self-denial and you are trying to still do things and once in a while they come and deceive you with one like on your post. You say, and you come up, come up, I tell you like post. <laughs> Let me talk to you about members who are crooks. Once in a while, they may even deceive you with an offering. How many of you have ever dated people who are really wicked? They behave like they want to leave you, but when you want to leave, they do something nice to keep you a little bit. Then they hurt you again. It's called witchcraft. When you talk to Sunday, 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 
they know what they are doing. That Sunday, even the church can tell you our preaching went to another level. You said, ah, restoration knee. They, they raised your emotions. Then they take you into three weeks of torture. And you keep allowing it. So you must know when to just end a certain follow-up with integrity and love. You know why? You are doing that, ladies and gentlemen, number four, that you may stop living in denial. Living in denial is killing many ministers. Do you think so and so left us? I don't think so. Why don't you think so? Didn't they share your birthday? When you I want you to have the eye of an eagle. You can tell who you. This thing has to end here. And you are doing that. Man of God, deliver yourself from self-denial. If your ministry used to be big and it has gone down a bit, don't die trying to prove it is big. That bit will kill you before your time. I've seen, one time I watched some pictures on Facebook. The way they were done, the way that camera was held, and the few tricks that were employed. Because I happen to know the place physically. I told mama this is rubbish. If you are small. You are small. And you are killing yourself trying to look big on social media. And then when people come physically. The place you made look like a stadium. Is not even a children's church. Self denial is finishing ministers in our time. Baba. To take it in. Don't fear. Don't, don't defend God. God loves shame. There's a statement people make, that guy is not is finished. And then God releases a wave. There are some things God will give you when people begin to say, it's finished. It's finished. It's finished. Then God shows one thing like this. Shuli niambia huyu mtu wa meisha. Mtu wa mungu wa haishi. Self -denial. What you don't have, you don't have. It doesn't mean you don't have faith. God will give it to you. God will give it to you. God will give it to you. God will give you people. God will give you people. God gives people to a man. Don't live in denial. And in order to deliver yourself from self-denial, there are people you just need to tell bye-bye because they are the ones making you live in self-denial all the time. They have made you build a sense of false expectation. You're trying to please someone that is not interested in how you feel. It's very painful. Don't do ministry for Facebook. Sometimes when you, when you really grow, you lose the desire to even post it. How many of you normally see congregation posted of redeemed Christian church? Every Monday. The man behind it does not even know he grew. The church is five kilometers long and three kilometers wide. Taxis speak offering during offering time. In case they post, you'll see they have posted three leaders and some four people who are at the corner and the message, see you in heaven. You man of God, I'm asking, when you grow, people will know you have grown. The pressure to prove you have grown, of course, Paul told Timothy, prove your ministry. He didn't say on Facebook. The pressure to prove you have simply means you don't have. And I didn't say don't post your ministry. It's important to post your ministry. Share what is happening. I do it. But you know what? You must destroy self-denial. If you used to be rich and you are no longer rich and you are trying to prove that you are still rich the way you used to be, you, you, trying to prove what you used to be is more pain. Accept it. Sometimes accepting some things does not mean you are a weakling. It means you want to move on. So you stop some follow-ups so that you can create the platform to do what? That you may focus. Okay, number four. That you may be free from living in denial. Number five. That you may focus on what still requires you. Many of you have wasted your energy following what does not need you 
while you are denying what really needs you. Write that one down. Some of you trusted so much what left you that you don't know how to build what you still have. And you are using the pain you are given by what left you to frustrate what has nothing against you now. No matter how much people betray you, they are good people. They are in your ministry that require your investment and your training. Don't let the bitterness of the past stop you from genuinely loving people. I still love people. I'm still investing in people. I'm still paying school fees. I'm still giving out food. I'm still sending money. Because one more step and you'll raise your own Jephthah. One more step and you'll step into your destiny. Don't stop evangelizing because of how much people have left your ministry. Who called you? If you stop your good deeds because of the wickedness of people, you called yourself. Don't let no wicked man make you wicked. It's not necessary. Somebody shout, I hear. Okay. In closing, allow me to say this. Number six, that God may have his way. You will not see God until you accept that what left, left. Baba, we are too young. Look at me, look at yourself. We are too young to curse people. When you leave MTN, sin mekombia nakuja? Nakuja. July 21st to 24th is the second edition. Ending up with my birthday. When you come back, you will not be the way you are now. Amen. Choose to be a healed man of God. Choose to preach not what you are going through now. When in your most difficult time, ask God, remove me from the message. And give me a message for your people. It is beautiful to preach about love when you are surviving hate. Because it heals you as a person. It rebukes you as a person. Don't waste the rocks that have been thrown at you. Use them to build a castle. Your pain is an asset. Don't waste it. Don't let your pain have the best of you. Have the best of your pain. Invest your pain. And this is what you need to do. There are types of people you should mark and never follow again. And ensure you never follow them, not from a hard point, from a healed heart. That even when you say they run, Daddy, you tell them, wait a minute, how is your pastor doing? Ah. What do you mean my pastor? I said, no, how is your pastor doing? I'm more solo, and I'll appreciate if you call me. You know, there are things you tell people. Daddy, no, you can't do it. I said, I'm more solo. And I love you, but how is your dad doing? One tried to corner me. Can I, can't I just send an offering as a son? I said, give it to the man you have joined now. That man needs it. And one more advice. I want you to commit yourself there. Serve that man the best way you can ever do. Son, I'm fine. Bye-bye. The grace to walk and live a healed life comes to you. You will not be a bitter man. It comes to you. The grace to let go what you have to let go and build what you have to build comes on you. Number one, sir, when a man has joined another ministry, what other sign are you looking for? They have already made him a deacon. What is wrong with you? You must, when, 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 when someone joins another ministry, you must learn how not to cast them. You must learn how to hand them over into the hands of that shepherd. God is watching you. Number two, if a member moves out of where they were staying without giving you a report and you called them and told them you are going and they didn't tell you they moved until you arrived at their previous residence, 
and it is the people telling you, but he moved out. He didn't tell you. Then you go, hello? You still have the strength to call. Did you get what I said, men of God? How many of you have ever gone through that? A, a member moved out of where they stayed. They didn't tell you and you went there. So I'm not lying. So you still go back to prayer. What is mine? Ever since the times of John the Baptist until today, the kingdom of God, my members, hakuna mwenye atachukua. Hata wakihama, hawajahama kwa kitabu ya uzima. Itawafuata. Something is not right with you. Learn to read when people are done with you. Number three, has blocked you on social media. You didn't block them, they blocked you. And you now open a pseudo account that I must confirm. <laughs> number four, they changed their current number and did not give you the new one. But adventure, you are a man of vision. You walked your way and used somebody at their place of work and got the new number. Because, hello! <laughs> you know I'm your father. <laughs> then, waka kuambia ile nambe ya kitambo ilikunywa chai. Asama, hakuna shida, hakuna shida. Hata yu ilikunywa chai, utaombea tu. We ujinga ndiyo nakusumbua. When people value you, they give you their private numbers. When someone changes their number, let me tell you, but oh, Papa, we didn't see the call. Something is wrong with my phone. And you saw them with a new phone the other day. Papa, I didn't see it. I, you know, we have been busy. We have been out of town. Somehow I took drugs. I overslept. I don't know. Papa, I just don't know. Hey, Papa, can I call you later? And they don't call you call. Hey, hey, Papa, hey, hey, sorry, Papa, can, you, can I call you later? And they don't call and you call. My friend. Kume umana. Ukiachwa achika. Somebody say, hey! Ndugu mano cage. Number five. You are so desperate to see them that you keep giving them appointments. Can you see me on Tuesday? Papa, I'll be there. Tuesday, 10 minutes for the appointment. Papa, can we push it to 3 p.m.? There's something urgent that came in my place of work. He said, hey, no problem, my daughter. Let me also do a few things. I will come back. Let's meet at 3. At 2.45, Papa, can we do it on Thursday? What is wrong with you? Don't know when it is over. Wachungaji, nimesema vibaya. Umewaji pata hapo, wamu? <laughs> Sasa una, unazunguka tu dunia mshirika na kuzungusha kwa town. Papa come to petrol station. Ukifika papa I'm at the butchery. The pastor Mzungu is a victim of this. The way is check. <laughs> pastor you have been there? Ah you are my son now. You can sit down. <laughs> you are a true son. A true son goes through what his father is going through has gone through. Where did you learn all this? Not when you are done with Bible school, welcome to Minister's Therapy Network. Here we treat what is not treated in Bible school. That Sami come out there has a degree from East African School of Theology. The way it is spelled, theology tells you something. But they don't teach this one there. Welcome to ministry. Where we study them by how they change their phone numbers. That one is not even in the Bible, but it is true. Look at this. Number four, number five, uh, number six, sorry. They have informed everyone they have left except you. Even the watchman at the gate knows they left. Even the caretaker of the church knows they left. All the sound technicians know they left. People in the choir know they left. So, uh, how many of you know my son so and so? So they look at each other, you mean it is still? He doesn't know. Everybody knows. What a relationship. Mpaka marafikiza kwa karibu na juangu liachwa. Na wendi ujuangu liachwa. A man has informed even your enemies and your friends, even your grandmother in the village. When you leave Peleka Kuona, Kiwa Mugonjo, I'm a big grandmother. I said, Nani, 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 Your grandmother knows you. People know the dogs in your compound have been informed. Dogs know you are left. You are the only one that doesn't know Uliachwa. Nugu, Pata, Marifa, Natarifa, Sai. Uliachwa, Angwa, Ukiachwa, Hachika. Don't curse people. Number seven, 
has denied you openly in a very major way. He's now advocating a principle you never taught. You can learn people from what they begin to advocate for. You have taught don't fight any man of God. They are not fighting you, but every post they now do, they are attacking a certain man of God. Telling you that we don't subscribe to your school of thought anymore. Leave us. Leave them in love. Number eight, you have followed up. Gave you promises of coming, but still never shows up. Don't, don't, don't follow up again. When a man begins to disown your honor and dodge your privileges, I am the middle of the church. <laughs> Somebody say, hey! You try to make him chairman. He's going back to not being chairman. You try to make him lead a group. You try to praise him before the church. And how many of you know my son? My son will collect this money. As soon as you are done saying that, he tells somebody, bro, you will collect. So can, Where is my son? He say, hey, Papa, they, he's, he's telling you, leave me. Leave people when they want to be left. What is wrong with you? There are people that will leave you if you decide paint all the leader seats white. In fact, the day you paint them white is the day they never sit on them again. Because God is teaching you. You have to know when follow-up is not necessary. When they keep dodging your privileges... You sent him a watch in the birthday thinking you are trying to win him back. And you saw the watch with one of your worship leaders. Ukiachwa Ndugu mchungaji, ukitoka hapa, acha kabisa. Don't follow again. Leave it. Don't raise Lazarus back to life by yourself. Lazarus has to always die because raising him is Jesus' work, not your work. Let your Lazarus die. Don't give him a breathing machine. Because the glory of God is always seen in the raising of Lazarus that many may believe. Let what is dead Die. Leave MTN with your eyes smoking fire and your spirit ready for prayer. Telling God the men that you give me, give them to me one more time. I'm set for evangelism. I'm set for radio. I'm set for television. I'm set for a new level. And I will not allow my past chain my vision and chain my dream. I will not allow what hurt me yesterday become a limitation to what Jehovah wants to do. When sons leave you, bid them bye-bye and tell them there are more sons to raise. When those that you raised turn their backs and insult you and embarrass you and try to paralyze you, forgive them and on your way, raise others. I tell God anoint me for the people you called me for. You never called me to sit at the gate of a rich man every day. There is something bigger than this. If I went too low that I forgot why you called me for it. Lord Jesus use the pain to elevate me to another dimension. Show me my terrain. Show me my domain. Show me where I belong. Give me the strength to bath others. Somebody say hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a David to be born when Malon and Chilion die. Madrege Badaga, we've got to take a journey out of Moab. We are going back to Jerusalem. We are going back to Bethlehem, the house of bread. Ladies and gentlemen, Malon has died. Your husband has died. Your sons have died. Orpah has kissed you bye bye and has gone back to her people. But there is a roof that you are left with. That I said, Your people. I shall be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I shall die. Where you rest, I shall rest. When you eat, I shall eat. 
When you go hungry, I shall go hungry. The journey to the house of bread is beginning in this empty end. And I came to tell you, Naomi, it may be painful, but put yourself together. A kiss or bye bye. Forget the graves and mob and begin a journey back to Bethlehem. The house of bread. There is a boy that you've never known before. There is a David that was to be born. The king's man redeemer was not buried in Moab. The king's man redeemer is still alive. Lift up your hands and say, my father and my God, my ministry is not dead. My calling is not dead. My anointing is not dead. The grace on my life is not dead. My eyes are on the horizon. My eyes are on exploits. The late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at one time said in a declaration and he said I've set my eyes on the mountain. My eyes have seen the glory of God. I may not go there with you but a time will come when the blacks, the yellows, the blues will go to the same schools and enjoy the same privileges. I have a dream that if Jesus tarries, you will take stadiums. I have a dream that if Jesus tarries, you will own a television. I have a dream that if Jesus tarries, I see buses. I see crusades. I see stadiums. I see greatness. I see equipment. I see trails. I see gospel campaigns. Raise it a bit, Karabagada. E baragada, e baragada, e baragada, e baragada, e baragada, e begede, e begede, e begede, e begede, e begede, e Pastor Sam, take another mic. E begede, e begede, e begede, e begede. Your next level will be born here today. Your next dimension. I take another mic, Pastor Sam. Your next dimension will be born here today. Concerning my life, concerning. 
running my ministry. I receive. Shout it better, Pastor. I receive every word spoken tonight concerning my destiny, concerning my ministry, concerning my life, concerning my marriage. Ah! Every word spoken tonight for my destiny. We receive everlasting Father. Thank you tonight. Thank you for every word. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the anointing. We are grateful. We lift our hands in surrender. We lift our voice in gratitude. Thank you for locating us. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for directing us. In Jesus' name we receive. And that glad heart said. Clap those hands and celebrate Jesus. Clap those hands and give him a praise, a shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a wonderful God we serve. For those watching online, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you and sustain you. We come to the end of our service today. Until tomorrow, we love you. God bless you. Let's appreciate our online and TV audience. In the name of our Lord Jesus.